In the beginning, computers took up entire rooms. This was the Queensland government's machine at the SGIO in 1971. Next, computers entered large companies, scaring women in the typing pools. Probably in the future, copy typists won't be taken on. In 1975, IBM introduced what it called a portable computer. It weighs about 50 pounds. You can plug it in anywhere. But from 1977, the home invasion began with the mass production of the Apple II. The secret to the microcomputer is this silicon chip here, called the Central Processing Unit, or CPU. The early screens had one colour, green or orange. Before disk drives, programs were entered via cassette tape and took ages to load. Floppy disks were faster. The industry boomed with 20 different computer brands on the market. Are you keeping up with the Commodore? Because the Commodore is keeping up with you. In 1982, this became the world's number one selling computer. The Commodore 64 family pack, a value of $700 for just $499. Are you keeping up with the Commodore? Because the Commodore is keeping up with you. Then in 1984, Apple tried to leapfrog them all. with the launch of the Macintosh, aimed at people so far intimidated by the tech revolution. On January 24th, Apple Computer will introduce Macintosh. It contained a never before seen device. It takes just an hour to learn how to move its electronic mouse, to edit memos or create graphics. The man behind it? Steve Jobs figured out how to build and sell it. And decades later, he's still at it, trying to stay ahead of the competition. Most of these tablets aren't even catching up with the first iPad. iPad 2 goes on sale on Friday. It's lighter, faster and thinner than the original and has front and rear facing cameras. The technology we now carry in our pocket, miles ahead of our original home computers. Let's compare apples with apples. The Apple iPad has the ability to hold or store 64,000 times more information than the Apple SE30.